Hey guys, so I am back with another video. I'm going to be talking about the women's NBA games that took place on June 6th. So there was two games that were played this day and I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know the teams that played. So you guys already know the teams that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So the Chicago Sky played against the Washington Mystics in this game. So the Chicago Sky... Um, as you guys know, they have their, or their, um, I guess you could call them, um, rookie duo. They're not really a duo because they don't both start, um, because Camila Cardoso comes off the bench, but Angel Reese starts, um, and then the Washington Mystics have their rookie, Olivia Edwards, who's been inserted in the starting lineup with the injury to Shakira Austin. I just feel like, you know, the Washington Mystics have not had it easy by losing not only Brittany Skites, but now Shakira Austin to injuries. Those are two players that were in the starting lineup, so it's honestly just not getting easy for them. They're playing against a team like Chicago who has a player like Cheyenne Carter coming off the bench and scoring 15 to 20 points or more a game. So that's definitely, um, you know, hard for them. Um, but, you know, this was a close game, um, you know, but the Chicago Sky did win this game. They won this game 79-71, to and they would now have a record of 4-5 and five on the season. Um, and the Washington Mystics, with another loss for them, they are now 0-10 on the season. Um, this is definitely not the start they wanted by starting their first 10 games of the season of losing all 10. Um, you know, it's a long season. I've said before in my games, but it's definitely hard to find the motivation to win when you keep losing and then especially whenever you get close at the end of games and it's like in crunch time, you kinda are used to losing so you don't have you don't you're like, Okay, we're gonna lose again, you know, when because you, you've been losing. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see. Um you know what this team looks like when they're fully he healthy and they have everyone back um you know because yes they're gonna play these games again but hopefully they will have their starters back you know because um you know Shakira Austin and Brittany Steins are both two players that bring a lot offensively but also their defense is really good for this team and they're missing that um, so the highest scoring player for the Chicago Sky was Cheyenne Carter coming off the bench. She scored 25 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists. Like I said, Cheyenne Carter is coming off the bench and she's putting up numbers for the Chicago Sky. Not only this game did she come off the bench and put up 25 points, but she was the highest scoring player for the Chicago Sky. Isn't that saying that much? Um, and then the... Newcomer scorer I chose is the rookie, Angel Reese. She has 16 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 assists. She had a double-double in this game. She's added on to her women's NBA stats. Um, you know, Angel Reese did have a really good game in this game. Um, Kim Mulkey was actually there, too. And she had a lot of um, family there at this game, as it being it was in um, at Washington's court. Um, she had a lot of family there. So that's, you know, a really good game for her and, you know, um, showing that how not only defensively her par her appearance, her presence being uh, made, and then how she translates that to offensively um, in her game. And then, then um, going to the Washington Mystics, the highest scoring player was not only a rookie, but um, this player, like I said, has been inserted into their starting lineup. Aaliyah Edwards, she had 23 points, 14 rebounds, two assists, and she was 10 of 12 from field goal attempts. Like I said, she's not only the a rookie starting, but then she's also, she scored the most points for the Washington Mystics um, in this game. Um, so she's doing a lot. She had four blocks in this game. Not only that, yes, um, I didn't say that also. Not, not only that, she had four blocks in this game. Um, she got a career high and points for it. Um, definitely box too. She had a, also she had a double double. Um, she's getting it done, you know. She had fourteen rebounds. Um, you know, 
I saw on Twitter some people were like, Washington should have took Adrian Reese over Aaliyah. Honestly, I don't know why that's even tweet going around because they're two different players, and who knows how Washington Mystics record would have been in their season would have been if they had Brittany Stikes and Shakira Austin in all of their games and not being injured. Um, so, you know, we can't say much about that. Um, but, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know the next four games for the Atlanta, uh, the Washington Mystics. They're playing the Indiana Fever, New York Liberty, Atlanta Dream, and Chicago Sky. Um, I definitely believe that they have an ch- opportunity to beat the Indiana Fever if Aaliyah Edwards can put up another 20-piece or more in this game. Um, but, you know, she's gonna, they're going to need some more help, you know, from the other players. And then I'll tell you guys the next five games for the Chicago Sky. They're playing the Atlanta Dream, Connecticut Suns. They're going to play the Washington Mystics again, Indiana Fever, and Dallas Wings. Um, they are definitely going to get tested in their games coming up, but it's definitely, obviously, they could be, um, they're beatable, but they definitely will need more from Marina Maybring and Dana Evans and, you know, um, Elizabeth Williams, you know, as, you know, in this game, Shannon Carter really stepped up and Angel Reese, you know, really, you know, was a, a defensive presence and, you know, she got on the rim and scored had a double double so you know that's interesting to see their those games coming up so um going into the next game this is the second game and last game that happened on this day this would be the new york liberty playing against the atlanta dream so um the atlanta dream um, you know, they've had um, their upsets of beating the back-to-back champs, the Las Vegas Aces. So going into these other games, um, you know, you have a lot of confidence for them. Going against the Connecticut Suns, um, New York Liberty, you know, because... But I can say that playing against Dallas um, as a rematch for the, It will not be easy to beat them twice. So, you know, that will be a definitely interesting game. Um, I'll definitely have to find it, but I'll come back um, and let you guys know when they play them again because that's definitely a game I would circle my calendar when the Atlanta Dream play the Las Vegas Aces again. But going into this game, the Las, um, the, La- La- the Atlanta Dream playing against the New York Liberty, um, they lost this. Um, the New York Liberty would win this game, seventy-eight to sixty-one, and they would now have a record of. 92 on the season. They definitely had a had a good start to the season. Um, you know they um, have their starting five are vets. You know they have Courtney Williams, Sabrina Nescu, Benajah Laney Hamilton, Brianna Stewart, and Jaquel Jones. Like it doesn't get any better for them for that. Um, you know one thing I will say that they are struggling is having um, production of scoring points off their bench um so going into games where a team is putting up a lot of like if you have a game that you know the five starters that they have there one of them is having a couple of them are having an off game and you try to get players to coming off the bench no one's scoring those are the games that I feel like it will really hit uh, New York Liberty hard because they don't have much production from their bench and scoring but going into this game, um, with that loss for the Atlanta Dream, they're now 4-4 and on the season. But going into this game, um, Brianna Stewart had the most points scored for the New York Liberty. She had 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. Um, and the highest scoring player for the Atlanta Dream was Alicia Gray. She had 16 points and 5 rebounds. And another player I wanted to point out. Her scoring aerial power, she had 13 points, 3 rounds, and 2 assists in this game. Um, like I said, I'll go ahead and point out the next 6 games for the Atlanta Dream. Um, so they're going to play Chicago Sky, Washington Mystics, Indiana Fever, Los Angeles Sparks, Michigan Lynx, and Indiana Fever. Um, 
you know, their team is definitely, I can feel like they can make a definitely a big run going into playoffs. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see them play, like I said, the Las Vegas Aces again. And they're going to play them again. Um, let me look at the calendar. July 12th. So that is a game. Definitely right now, I would circle my calendar because that is definitely a game I want to see. Um, watch and see how um, if they're able to beat the Aces twice or, you know, if the Aces is going to come back and, you know, win that game. Um, going into the New York Liberty, I'll give you guys the next three games they're playing. Uh, they're playing the Connecticut Suns, the Washington Mystics, and the Las Vegas Aces. Um, definitely two of the three games, they're definitely going to be challenged. Um, I definitely will be circling the Connecticut Suns game. That game is the 8th. And the Las Vegas Aces game is the 15th. Those two games I definitely will be circling, marking on my calendar, um, and making sure I'm available to watch that game because um, those two, if I'm, you know, watch, looking at this calendar because those two games, um, those matchups, New York Liberty is the Suns and Aces, those two games that I would not want to miss. They're like potential semifinal slash championship games, matchups that could happen. Um, so, you know, it's definitely games that, you know, like I said, I wouldn't want to miss and I would definitely put my time into watching, um, you know, because those are teams that, you know, are some of the big teams, you know, offensively and defensively and teams that have made big names for themselves in these past couple of seasons. So that is my breakdown of the games that happened on June 6th. Um, one thing I did see on Twitter that I wanted to talk about is that the ESPN's 2024 top rookies ranking that they have. Um, I thought it was on Twitter, like I said, so I wanted to, you know, just kind of like, tell you guys and talk about it, um, you know, again, my personal opinion. But then also I wanted to ask you guys what you thought about it, um, you know, to give y'all the input about it. Um, so I'm like, it was it gave like top six I believe, but no I believe it gave like almost top eight I think it was. So I just wrote down the top five and because that's what I want to talk about the top five. So Kevin Brick, for, she plays for the Los Angeles Sparks. She's at number one. Number two is Angel Reese, plays for the Chicago Sky. Number three is Kate Martin. She plays for the Las Vegas Aces. Number four, Rakia Jackson. She plays for the Los Angeles Sparks. And number five, Julie Van Loo. She plays for the Washington Mystics. Cameron Brick, um, she is definitely um, a defensive presence. She's um, up there in the league for the most blocks already. Um, she's definitely finding her groove in scoring. So... Um, I believe this is a good ranking for her. Um, and then Angel Reese is number two. I definitely believe Angel Reese. She's showing not only her what she is able to do bringing from college to now the women's NBA. Um, her double doubles, her offensive presence, um, of not only scoring and her defense, how it translates to her offense by getting steals or getting blocks or anything like that um, in the game. And Kay Martin is definitely a rookie that is underrated and not talked about um, what she's bring, playing a lot of minutes for the Las Vegas Aces and she's playing crucial minutes at that and she's playing some of the three and four of them at some point in the game. So she's definitely a player that, um, you know, is not being seen or her, um, you know, I definitely believe she, he, she should be watched. You know, she, um, is scoring good from the three point line. Not only is she scoring from the three, but she is, um, defensively, you know, making a presence, um, against these other teams and, um, you know, assisting her teammates on the Las Vegas Aces. Number four, Rakia Jackson. Uh, she plays for the Los Angeles Sparks. 
she was coming off the bench and averaging like 10 points a game and she's still averaging that but now she has um inserted into the starting lineup and i think that's something that's definitely good for her uh you know she's definitely bringing her a game from college it's definitely shown uh, her rebound her presence defensively and offensively getting to the rim and her jump shot has only gotten better um, she's progressed a lot in scoring um, since the start, and you know she's definitely a player. Like I said about K. Martin, she's an underrated and not talked about. Number five, Julie Venlu. Um, you know she's getting there in scoring. You know she does have her on and off days in scoring for games, but her assists per game is definitely. She's averaging about five assists per game. I want to say. So she's definitely finding her teammates and getting them the ball just and, you know, setting them up so they're in the position to score. Um, she plays for the Washington Mystics. I'm sorry, I didn't know if I said that already, but, you know, that's definitely something that, you know. But also, now that I broke that down, uh, these games down, and we're past that, and now I'm talking about, you know, this was from the, this was from the ESPN top, their top rankings. Um... And I want to say, ask this. Do you agree with these top five? And um, comment down below your ranking. If you do believe these teams, these players do deserve to be in the top five for rookies, but in a different order, then comment down below. And I'll, I want to see you guys' opinions and what you guys think. Um, and also... why isn't a question that I want you guys to answer because I know it's going to be a question people are going to ask why isn't Caitlin Clark in this top 5 for rookie of the year I mean not rookie of the year but the top rookies for the women's NBA why isn't Caitlin Clark in this top 5 and another question is is do you believe rookie um, Caitlin Clark, even though she's not in the top five rookies, is gonna win Rookie of the Year. Give you guys, a, um, I want you guys to give your opinions down below. Um, I definitely am gonna read the comments, you know, because I do want to know what you guys believe. Because right now I'm in a scramble. I don't know really what. Like I said, I will give you guys. Um, in one of my videos, I did say I'll give you guys my top. Um, probably like three of for the categories of each I'm about to say and like once we're like halfway through the season so probably at the end of the um season for when they stop playing for all-star break I probably will give you guys that definitely that time I yeah I sh I'm gonna give you guys my MVP top in three in MVP race um top three in rookie of the year and top three for um most improved and sixth player of the year so yeah i'm gonna give you guys that um but yeah that is my overnight breakdown of the game um that's all i got for you guys in this video please subscribe to my channel so you guys keep up with all my videos comment down below if there's any teams or sports you guys would like me to talk about because i'm interested in you know um talking about some other teams or sports or even players that you guys would like me to talk about also um don't forget to like this video so you know i know you guys like watching my videos so please like it thank you guys for watching bye guys